Marx believed that the expectations of the scientists affect the movements of the cells towards the toxins or nutrients. Yes. But if you do the experiments without expectation, then the results are independent of you as a scientist. It's a very good question. I'll tell you why. When research on drugs is carried out by the drug company, it will be four or five times more in their favor than when the same research is carried out by independent people. So it's thought the scientist is very important in the process. So cells cannot move in both directions at the same time. They cannot be in growth and protection. So in summary, cells move to positive signals when they're in growth. They're attracted to positive signals. And cells will move away from negative signals. Uh, they'll be repulsed, uh, but they're in protection. But there are signals that are neither positive or negative. I call them elevator music. When you get in the elevator, you don't dance, but you don't get sick. So, But the same thing happens in humans. The mind will perceive the environment. And if it sees what it believes to be threatening, it will send a signal to the cells telling them that the environment is not supporting. And the system is called the hypothal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The hypothalamus is the part of the brain that interprets the perception. When the hypothalamus sees stress, it wants to tell the whole body something is going on. So it sends a signal to the pituitary gland, which is called the master gland. And that gland sends signals to 50 trillion cells. But in the, if it's a threat, it will send the signals to the adrenal glands. And the common understanding of the adrenal glands is fight or flight. Then the adrenal glands release stress hormones to the body. And the first thing the stress hormones do, and, and I'll, I'll make a quote from a, a physiology textbook. The stress hormones cause the blood to preferentially go to the arms and legs. And why would the blood, why the preference for arms and legs? Right, that's so you, you can run or fight, but there was, you miss something when, when I say it that way. If the blood is preferentially going to the arms and legs, where was the blood before it was going to the arms and legs? It was in the viscera. And what's the function of the viscera? Growth, health, Wachstum, maintenance. Gesundheit. Okay, so then logic. If the blood leaves the viscera, what happens to your ability to grow and maintain yourself? Well, it goes down, and the reason is when you're in protection, you shut off growth. So like the single cell, the whole body is in growth or protection, but not both at the same time. Now, some people think of growth from a, from a baby to an adult, but everybody needs to grow every day. Even if you're 100 years old, you need to grow every day. And the reason is, is that your cells are dying every day. Billions and billions of cells, like the, the lining of the gut, has to be replaced every three days. That's why chemotherapy is very toxic. Because chemotherapy kills dividing cells, whether they're cancer cells or normal cells. That's why people that are on chemotherapy have trouble with digestion. And they're also their hair falls out and doesn't come back, and the skin doesn't grow well. So if your days are filled with stress, then you are putting lots of hormones in your body to direct you for fight or flight. And that is why you start to get sick when you're under stress, because you are not replacing the cells at the normal rate. Okay, now there's another important effect about stress. When the hormones go from the hypothalamus to the pituitary and then to the adrenal gland, it releases the stress hormones. As I said, the stress hormones ca cause the blood to go from the gut to the periphery because the hormones squeeze the blood vessels in the gut closed. 
And the function of the stress hormones is to take the energy of the body and get it all to run and fight. So the stress hormones will shut off the functions of things that will not be needed in fight or flight. One of the most uh, uh, important uses of energy in the body is the immune system. And now think of this, the logic. Let's say you have um, a bacterial infection and you have diarrhea. And a lion is chasing you. How much energy should you put in to fight the infection? And how much energy should you put in to run away from the lion? Forget the immune system, because if the lion eats you, then the bacteria are his problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is this. Stress hormones shut off the immune system. And the significance is, it's important, is that every one of you right now is infected with almost all of the disease germs that humans have right now if i take a blood sample i will show you you all have viruses and bacteria and parasites and you might say well if i'm infected then why am i not sick because if your immune system is working properly it will suppress these parasites and germs but the moment you start to shut off the immune system, then these organisms begin to start growing again. So the idea that you catch a disease is not really true. You already have the disease. And the med medical people call these germs and parasites opportunistic organisms. So uh, if, if you are under stress and you, sh and you shut off the immune system, then you give these organisms the opportunity to then make the disease. And yet, when we get some of these diseases, we go to the medical doctor and they give us drugs to kill the germs and the bacteria. Well, this is very helpful if the disease is going very quickly. That was not the problem in the first place. The problem was stress that shut off the immune system. So to get, to get healing is, okay, treat the disease, but also treat the stress. Okay, so now we have two problems with stress. It shuts off growth and it shuts off the immune system. There's a third problem, which I call, uh, uh, it's adding, it's adding more, more stress. It's adding more stress, a third problem. When you are in fight or flight, do you think you use conscious reasoning or reflex behavior? You use reflex behavior. So very important, listen, the stress hormones, I said before, squeeze the blood vessels in the gut, causing the blood to go to the periphery. But when the stress hormones come into the body, they also go to the brain, and they squeeze the blood vessels in the front of the brain where consciousness is, to push more blood to the back for reflex behavior. That means when you're under stress, you are less intelligent. And for my example, I give you the people of the United States. And the reason is the government knows this. And ever since 911, they keep in the media, the newspaper, the television, more stress, more stress. And the result is very important. And the importance is this. Since 911, every year, the pharmaceutical companies have made 20% more profit every year. In five years, 100% more profit in selling drugs. So it's important to realize that stress affects you in many different levels, but all of them result in shutting down your life. So in our next picture, it's like the cells. People move toward positive growth attraction signals and people move away from fear or, or threatening signals. When you move in this direction, you're in growth, and in the other direction, protection. And some things in our world are like elevator music, indifferent. Okay. It has now been demonstrated that love is the greatest growth signal in the world. For example, in uh, uh, Yugoslavia, 
uh, where they have orphanages. Uh, uh, who was the, <laughs> the the leader of Yugoslavia? Yugoslavia. Uh, uh, I think. Don't you mean Romania? Romania. Yeah. Oh, Romania. Yeah. yeah go ahead with also, it. Also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was yeah, the leader. Yeah. yeah. That um, the people could not afford to take care of their children, and they sent them to orphanages. They got food, clothing, the protection of living in, inside. They got everything they needed to live except love. And about 40% of those children became autistic. What is autism is, is the, the child is shutting itself off from the world. It's in protection, closing itself down. And all of the parameters of health and intelligence in these children were greatly suppressed. They got everything but love. Okay, now the issue is, when we are in this direction in protection, we shut off growth, and that's when illness starts. So when we're on this side of the scale, protection leads to disease, and growth leads to wellness. And I said, well, what causes this disease? And the answer is stress. Now, here's the problem that people do not realize. If I just remove the stress from my life, where am I on the scale? It's zero. If you want wellness, it's not just the absence of stress. You need the joy and the love to go to growth. So if you're in the middle place, you're not in real growth and real health. So stress alone is not the problem. It is what we need is more love and life and happiness. And all of this is based on perception of how you respond to the world. So now the most important question is, where do our perceptions come from? Number one, genetics. We get instincts we are born with. You do not have to teach a child how to pull its hand out of a fire. It is also very complicated instincts. For example, when a baby is born, every baby can swim from the moment it's born. It can be born underwater and swim like a dolphin. And this brings up a question which I'll answer in a little bit. If we were all born with the instinct and the ability to swim, then why do we have to teach children how to swim? And it's related to the second source of perception. And that is the subconscious mind where our learned habits and learned experiences are recorded. So I maybe I'll talk about the swimming now. Okay. When a baby is very young, the parents are afraid that the baby will drown. So every time the baby goes near the water, the parents, ah, ah, the baby's by the water, by the sink, by the toilet, by the brook, wherever the water is, the baby hears the parents get very excited. So the baby learns that water is dangerous. And it has a fear of water because the parents express the fear, so the baby is afraid of water. So when the baby is five years old, the parents buy, buy him a bathing suit. And they want to put the baby into the water, and the baby grabs the parents like a cat with claws. Because what is in the baby's mind? That the baby is, you're going to drown the baby. So the learned behavior can override the instincts. The third source of perceptions is the conscious mind, which is different than subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is learned habits. The conscious mind is creative programming. We talk about genetics because you were born with that as nature. It's in your nature to pull your hand out of the fire. But the subconscious behavior is learned, so it's based on experience, and it's called nurture. And for 100 years, science says, which is more powerful, nurture or nature? And it's a useless argument, because what's more powerful? Consciousness. When you are conscious, you can rewrite the instincts. And when you become conscious, you can rewrite the experiences of your life. So that it is important to recognize that what we are not using enough of in our world today is consciousness. And I will describe in a little while how most of our lives, 95% or more of our life, 
is controlled by the habits of the subconscious mind. Now the question is, in 